Wow, AJ, thank you once again for another wonderful intro. Hello, everyone. This is Too Clever Mafia. The, you are listening to the Too Clever Mafia podcast. And welcome. Welcome to all my mafians out there. Don't forget to check out our website over at TooCleverMafia.com and join us on all of our social media. How you doing today, AJ? How you doing? Good? Oh, we've got a great show today, AJ, don't we? Yeah, we're going to chat up about the baseball 2020 season and when is that bad boy going to begin, right? We're going to see what we can uh, figure out by all of the analysis and things that are going on around us and hopefully soon for us baseball fans out there and um, got to, uh, hey, you know, uh, one thing, to I, earlier today I managed to venture out and I know uh, we... Well, I went over to the the local food store, and uh, no one. I, I wasn't shopping for avocado, but uh, I was looking for paper towels, right? And uh, there's been a low supply on that in my area. And I, a while back, I had a few inventions that I said these are these are killer, right? And these are all you know they're going to be trademark killer inventions. And one of them, uh, well, the three big ones, AJ, I'll tell you, um, and and uh, don't try to steal them from me, but were four square paper towels, Twizzler straws, and a shopping cart tube is what I called it. But I'll go over them. But the four square paper towels is out. I, I saw Brawny today. Brawny, uh, I went into the paper towel aisle, and um, they had no paper towels, by the way, except one. And they were the, on the shelf, and they were like $6 for two rolls of, of Brawny paper towels. And... They were a paper towel divided into four squares. Now, I've seen the ones divided in half, but never the four squares. I said, you know, this would be good. I, you know, sometimes at night, I don't need a whole paper towel. I don't even need a half a paper towel. I like to conserve, and I want to, you know, get a, a quarter of a paper towel. But, uh, yeah, I am a little disappointed. Uh, Brawny apparently makes those four square paper towels, and uh, I did uh, end up picking up some, uh, but, yeah. Yeah, and and my my other one, oh the other invention I had was the Twizzler straws. That was uh, I I sent it over to uh, Hershey's. I believe Hershey's is the one who makes Twizzlers, and I said you know there's a big push not to have plastic straws anymore, and uh, the paper straws are just awful. They are awful. Have you ever tried a paper store, uh, straw straw, uh, AJ? No. Oh my goodness, they get stuck to your mouth. It's you might as well just take one of the brawny paper towels and just jam it in your throat. They're horrible. Oh my god! And it's this. I can barely even drink out of a paper cup, let alone a paper straw. Who over? You know, I, I'm not even gonna get into that. But uh, my daily cup of coffee, they've switched over to paper cups. I used to use the styrofoam, and yeah, I know there's a different environmental impact and yada yada yada. But the the paper cups are horrible, and paper straws. Oh my goodness! It's a, a, a anyway. My uh, Twizzler has my memo, and uh, if they are smart, they can come out with straws in all different colors, all different flavors, diet straws, sugar-free straws. Uh, for someone like me, watching my my uh, nutritional intake, um, you know, but they they are missing the boat. They could sell it to Disney. They could sell it to whoever. What was out there marketing? If you do, you know, I just take a small percentage if you want my idea. But I did send it over to Twizzler. Now I don't know if there's other ones. I would imagine there's some sort of Twizzler knockoff. I don't even know if Twizzler was first. Maybe they were the second one who made a Twizzler or a candy stick with a hole in the middle. But those Twizzler straws, they, you know, I was a, I remember when I was a kid, I would take the Twizzler and I would pop it into a can of soda and then drink the soda out of, right out of the right out of the can. But with the um, Twizzler straw. And, uh, because, you know, you really didn't get straws back then. And then, but, uh, yeah, that's definitely one of my inventions. And if anybody out there wants to, uh, knows how to manufacture Twizzler straws and wants me to, uh, uh, be the, the face of the product, let me know. Because I am in. Twizzler straws is the, are the wave of, of the future. There's, when you think straw, you're going to think Twizzler straws. And Twizzler is that... Well, apparently, if Twizzler, Twizzler is trademarked, then we'll have to come up with another name. If Twizzler, I would really prefer to work with Hershey's. I think they're a powerful company. I love Hershey Park over in uh, Pennsylvania. Hershey, Pennsylvania. Yeah, I'm, I'm a venture over there. This, uh, I don't know about this summer, but uh, a lot of stuff going on, you know what I mean? But sooner or later. And uh, my, other last, my third invention was the uh, shopping cart tube. Now, 
We've all been to the shopping stores lately, and they're dirty. The, the carts are dirty. I've always said they were dirty. I always have said they get you sick way before, and um, now you go in, they, a lot of them wipe you down. They will give you a little uh, bacterial uh, alcohol wipe, right, to wipe them down. And, uh, but I came up with an idea. And maybe, who knows, maybe Brawny and my four square idea can kind of work together because, uh, you know, the tubes that are inside the paper towels? Well, you, you crack one of them open. Well, I don't know if I should get into my design of the whole product, but whatever. Again, I'll split it with someone if they want to make this product and use my name and my face and my image, and uh, I could advertise it for free on this website, right? Anyway, on my website and my podcast and all that, so... Anyway, I keep getting sidetracked, AJ. you got to keep me on track today. I am full of energy. There must be all the sugar in the Twizzler straws, right? But, <laughs> so, so my idea for the shopping cart protector is, a, is the tube that's inside the paper towels, right? And it's some sort of peel-off thing where you can kind of put it on the paper. Uh, the, you can peel it off the paper towel roll, kind of like that type of setup, and you can grab it on the handlebars of the, the shopping cart. That way your hands are not touching it and it's antibacterial. And when you're done, you peel it off and you throw it away. Now, I was thinking years ago about that because I figured every time I go to the food store, I come home with a snivel in a couple of days after, right? Then this whole CV thing came up and um, is that okay to say CV? Yeah? Okay. Well, this whole thing came up and uh, uh, coronavirus, by the way, just in case we're talking about, but uh, where people couldn't go in and then, you know, you want to be more careful and when you're in the food stores and you're around other people and all of that. But And then I started seeing in the parking lots of the food stores, people would dispose of their gloves and their masks right on the floor in the, in, in the, 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 the parking lot. Now, that wasn't, that's not very nice and I'm sure somebody has to clean that up and then I was thinking, well, my shopping cart tubes will end up on the floor and make a big mess and then it could be a liability. I don't know. Anyway, if Brawny wants to uh, reach out to me, wink, wink. Yes, AJ, I'm winking. I'd be more than happy to to look into sponsoring their product and, and offering them my, my million-dollar idea. So, like I said, we have a great show lined up for you today. We have... Um, uh, Beyonce is here. No, no. What? No, Beyonce is not here. Oh. Okay, well, I thought you and Jay-Z were going to sit down and uh, help us out uh, with the uh, Baseball 2020 talk. As Jay-Z is quite the baseball fan, I believe he... Is he okay, he's not coming today. Okay, well, Jay-Z will not be here with Beyonce, and Beyonce will not be here either. So it looks like it's just going to be me and you, AJ. They were never, uh, apparently, uh, going to be here. And uh, I should get a better prescription for my glasses. Okay, so we will be right back while I look for a better pair of bifocals. Well, hello, everyone. Welcome back. This is... Your favorite podcast host, Two Clever Mafia, back again. I'd like to say welcome once more, and uh, it's going to be a great day today. We're going to have a great show. We've got uh, some wonderful things lined up for you today, and um, we're going to dive right in, AJ. We're going to go right into the first segment here, and it is uh, a, becoming a very popular segment here on our uh, our little podcast, and... Um, it's called Old Ad Copy, and uh, today's show could have been brought to you by Woolworths. Woolworths. Does anybody remember that five and dime? Anybody out there? IJ, you probably don't remember. Yeah, they were known as a, a five and dime, which was a, a nickel and a dime. And uh, you can get really inexpensive items. Uh, wow, they dated back to... Uh, I think 1870, 1880. What was the date that I have? 1879. So they were around for a very, very long time. I remember as a um, as a child, we visited um, uh, Staten Island, New York, and there was a uh, a Woolworth store down 
Um, I believe it was off of Bay Street. Those of you from Staten Island or the New York area might remember recall that, but it was way down off of Bay Street, and uh, there was a Woolworths, uh, and uh, I remember vague. I remember going in there, and um, I remember uh, buying. What did I get back then? I believe it was a kazoo. I, I bought a little plastic kazoo when I was a kid, um, and I asked. Uh, my mom for a, a nickel or a dime, I don't remember what it was, and uh, it was like pulling teeth, getting money back then. Not like the kids nowadays that, you know, they cry and they want $60 for a new video game. It's, it's pretty it's crazy, but yeah, back then it was a nickel. You know what else you remember? You can get used to get people to get bazooka gum. Remember bazooka gum was a nickel? Yeah, bazooka gum, uh, I don't want to go off too much track here talking about Woolworths, but bazooka gum you can usually have a bucket at the counter and uh you'd pick a different flavor they had original i remember cherry and grape grape was good um and inside they had a little comic a little comic and you could read the little comic and uh and then uh you can send away sometimes to get a little little prize never collected you had to collect a certain amount of comics to do that then you sent it in with uh i don't know 850 dollars and then they they sent you a uh uh, a frisbee or something I don't remember but uh, anyway Woolworths uh, they back from 1879 but then uh, they were you know they were the go-to the go-to place they were the uh, target or target of today's uh, uh, day and age but they had everything you needed and it was cheap it was very cheap but um, I think the shopping malls kind of killed them they really uh, put an end to Woolworth's uh, um, business model. You know, it was very expensive, and you're selling only nickel and dime stuff. It's kind of hard to pay the rent, you know. So, um, I think, yeah, they went out of business back in, um, I believe, ni- 1997 was uh, around that time, and there were... Uh, um, no, I, you know, I, I don't... Maybe they're still around. Maybe... I wonder if they're still around, AJ. They might be around in like the UK. Um, not really uh, too sure, but I know the one. I haven't seen one in a while. But uh, anyway, if Woolworths was still around, this would have been a paid promotion for Woolworths. Go shop, pick up your nickel and dime stuff. But uh, not really anywhere around here. So the only issue we have now is uh, if you wanted a five and dime, you go to like a dollar store, right? One of those stores that sell everything for a dollar. And they have some good bargains there. There's some not so good bargains, you know, David. Um, you know, I went, I went um, they, I, they tend to go there, AJ, to get uh, birthday cards from time to time. And a uh, very good deal. You get like two for a dollar and uh, they're last year's versions. But really, who's counting with birthday cards, you know? So... Went there and um, was waiting online. This was a while ago, and uh, waiting online. And we were trying to get uh, the, you know, I, I get the birthday cards, and uh, they were out for my grandkids. And then none of the wiser. They just want the money inside the birthday cards, right? So I get the uh, birthday cards. And I'm waiting online, and they have a, a, an end cap of uh, Pringles sitting there. But they weren't Pringles. They were like Pringles or. Prugles or something like that, and uh, I was like, oh, uh, you know, my grandkids would like to, to snag on these chips. They always like the potato chips, and um, we, uh, so I picked them up, I went to the line, and then I'm waiting in line. Now, here it is, I went there to spend a dollar, right? Two cards for a dollar. I'm waiting in line, and I find a, um, I get the, 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 the Pringles or the, whatever they are, and uh, they weren't real Pringles, just, just to be sure, because Pringles is still out there, and Maybe there'll be a sponsor of ours one day. Who knows? But they... I look to the left, and there's like a, 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 a box of playing cards, right? They have all these different types of playing cards used, open playing cards from uh, uh, casinos, right? From Las Vegas casinos. All the different, like, Harrah's and all of the different... Uh, you know, I guess they buy... Well, they, they don't reuse the... the um, playing cards in the casinos too often, so they, they, after a certain amount of time, I guess they wear out, I would imagine, and I'm not a big gambler, so I'm not really too up on the playing card situation, but 
they, they um, were there, and so I picked up a couple of packets, and uh, I thought my grandkids would find it interesting, and uh, and uh, you know I ended up spending like twenty five dollars there, and when I went there to spend a dollar. So anyway, the dollar stores don't do badly, and there was a line. There was, the place was very busy. It was hopping. It was like a weekday afternoon, and people couldn't get enough of the the, the things there. But a lot of people in the cards aisle. A lot of people, a lot of people checking out the cards there. Check out our website over at www.twocleverMafia.com. Make sure you sign up for all of our social medias. Um, we are on everything. We also uh, we are on um, uh, Facebook, Twitter, Instagram. Uh, AJ set up a Discord account. Uh, make sure you like and subscribe. We uh, are trying to uh, build our fan base. And um, if you'd like to support the show, you can always head over to Patreon. It's Too Clever Mafia, T-O-O, Clever Mafia. And uh, you can support our channel, which uh, we would greatly appreciate to uh, pay all the credit card bills that are coming in of all of the equipment that AJ has. But we have a new... Um, not that they're interested, because AJ tells me, well, they're not really interested in this, but we've got a new soundboard coming in, um, some new tech... Uh, so we're definitely working on uh, some more fun things. We've got some great new interviews coming our, coming your way. Um, check over YouTube. Start the, the conversation over. You like and uh, subscribe over. Is it like and subscribe over there? Well, if they like the video. If you like it, uh, because we post some of the the podcasts in uh, video-esque format over on the YouTubes so you can listen to them. Um, and definitely uh, if you want some merch, or merchandise, uh, head over to uh, 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 Teespring. We've got all of the merch over there. So enough of the uh, the shameless plugs. Make sure you're listening to all of our podcasts. We're available on Anchor, Spotify. Hey, over on Spotify, we're um, uh, going to have a big... I'm not going to um, spoil it if you don't know already, but starting 2021, we are going to have an exclusive, uh, another podcaster... No, maybe not as good as Too Clever Mafia, but another top podcaster is going to be joining the uh, the Spotify team along with Too Clever. So uh, definitely check us out. Uh, if you know who he is, I'm not going to say the name. Uh, don't want to give it away, but uh, maybe I'll see if I can get on his show. AJ, what do you think? No, no. Okay. Well, AJ has no uh, no marketing sense, I guess. I don't know. He just presses the buttons, right, AJ? Why don't you give us a good button press? Go ahead. All right. <laughs> okay. So we got a great show to you, for you today. We're going to be talking about um, uh, the Major League Baseball, and uh, we're going to be kind of seeing when that's going to come back into play. There's a lot of uh, negotiations and talk and what's going on in the world today. We want to bring it back safely. But uh, we'll see. I mean, there's a lot of fans out there that are disappointed. But, you know, rightfully so, they're doing the right thing. Um, we don't want to rush things back and uh, make things worse as far as the uh, the CV, as uh, as I've heard out there. Uh, yeah? Is that is that okay to say CV? Yeah, I know. It, it, it's been a devastating uh, uh, time with... Uh, the coronavirus and everything that's going on and uh, I know I've, I did a whole episode but uh, thank you again to all of our folks that work in the hospitals and have been taking care of uh, all of the uh, the sick and um, all of the first responders out there and uh, definitely you have the support of Two Clever Mafia and his team and um, keep up the good work you might be seeing me soon I'm over the hill AJ I think uh I might end up in one of those facilities, so I've got to be nice. I've got to be nice. But uh, I tried to be. I tried to be. So uh, give me some outro music, AJ, and uh, we will be right back. Well, hello, everyone. Welcome back. Welcome back. And today we have a uh, very interesting episode for all of you baseball fans out there. And we're going to call this one Baseball 2020, and uh, we're trying to figure out when baseball is going to get going again as a fan and for the fans, and when we're going to uh, kind of see some some gameplay once again. 
Um, so for the baseball fans out there and those of you who are not really familiar or paying attention or care about what's going on in the Major League Baseball world, um, it's kind of been put on hold, which uh, is disappointing, um, but necessary because of uh, what's going on in the world these days. And uh, just to give a little bit of history in case Mrs. Mafia is listening, you know, the baseball season runs normally 162 games from the end of March to about March 26th or so, I think, this year. And and it was supposed to run through the end of September. And then they play a bunch of playoff games into October and yada, 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 the uh, uh, World Series. And then the winner is the champion of the world. And, uh, you know, there's a couple of teams that are always there and there's some that are never there. And if you're... On either side of it, you're definitely a fan of one or the other. Anyway, so the official games do start in March, right? But training and practice starts, what they call pitchers, pitchers and catchers report. They usually report before the regular position players, and it starts sometime, uh, they call that spring training, not in the spring, but uh, more like around February, I don't know, second week of February, February 10th, 11th, some 11th, 12th, something around there. And the position players usually go a few days after that. But the first spring training game, a practice game, usually starts the end of February. I think last year or this year is supposed to start, uh, AJ, about February 21st. I, I'm, or the, the year's gone by. Do you believe it's, it's June already, right? By the time we're recording this, this is June. 2020 has just been a complete washout. But anyway, so... End of February or so, so if you're following me, um, they get about a month of practice, and then they usually hit the field for real games the end of March, right? So, and things get rolling, and it's usually not till April or so that the games really start to get into full swing, and anyway. So, now the negotiations between the Major League Baseball players and the Major League Baseball owners has kind of started and stalled and started, and they're going back and forth to say, okay, because they, they want to restart the season, but they want to do it safely. Understood. Congratulations. I'm very happy to hear that. And But it has not gone well. Um, and they've talked of a shortened season of 115, 89, 82, 76 games, what have you. Now, just to take a moment, we're in June Right, we're but probably uh, you'll be hearing this probably mid June or so. So m- mid June, we are about halfway through a six month baseball season, not in counting the playoffs or so. Right, so that's about we're about fifty percent through now. So uh, normally a baseball season is about one hundred and sixty two games, like I said earlier. So you probably, if you were just to pick it up where the season would start, not counting the the practice month and all. You're probably about 81 games, 80 games, somewhere in that neighborhood, right? And then the, But the talks have really gone back and forth because the players and the players' union, who they want to be paid and some some of their offers, have, they want to be paid 100% of their contracts and their salaries, some 75, 60, the, 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 the owners came back and One. there was a, talks of only paying them 25% Two. because Ten. of the loss in revenue. Now... That they lose revenue when because there's not going to obviously be as many fans in the stadium, right? But they still don't lose their TV deals, and I don't know what their negotiations on their licensing and their merchandise or merch, as I say. And uh, all of the those sales are still going on. They're, I believe they still get paid. I don't know how the TV. I, anyway, that's a whole big another business part of it, and I'm not going to get into. But they suggested they were going to lose about six hundred thousand uh, six hundred thousand dollars per game in a um, uh, big because there weren't so many people there buying you know the hot dogs and the beer and the overpriced soda and all that fun stuff, right? So sick they lose a little bit. So they were concerned, and then they wanted to um, kind of tweak that a little bit. Now, where this gets complicated, and I don't want to complicate things too much, is at the end of the 2021 season, next year, the, uh, there's something called the Collective Bargaining Agreement, and that this thing, this Collective Bargaining Agreement, determines what players get paid, how much, a lot of red tape, um, players going to what arbit- they call arbitration, um, when they're eligible to be traded, and when they're eligible to... Um, not sign and go free agent. There's all kinds of things going on. Um, minimum amount of contracts, all that stuff. So with no fans in the stadium, these owners tend to lose a lot of money, and they don't want to. They they don't want to lose that. 
They don't want to lose that, that money at all, right? So unlike the NBA and the NHL, NBA is basketball, NHL would be hockey, MLS, which is soccer in America, uh, NASCAR, car racing, and the PGA even, golf, um, who seem to have their act together when it comes to the organization with and then their players, you know, the negotiations and all of that. And I'm not going to count the NFL, who just gives everything a hard no. But MLB has really had a rough go making nice with its players. And um, it really, at this time, you think they want it, you want to get things back up and going, right? You don't want this going back and forth and, and, and the, the contract coming up. A lot of people are saying the, the, um, negotiations. This is kind of the first phase because the, the, the players' union you know, is going to really hard bargain next in twenty end of twenty twenty one. And there's been strikes before in baseball where they haven't played. And remember in the nineties there was a, a strike somewhere around the playoffs, if I'm not mistaken, or the half the second half of the season. And it's it, it's really losing the play. It's hurting the fan. It's, the fans do, are saying, you know, enough of this. We we. We're going to move on, you know. If you you guys, we want to watch the game. We want to, you know, enjoy watching the talent and, and the players and all of that and, and, and following our teams. But this intermingling and the, the contracts and the negotiations and, you know, it's a game, folks. It, this is, a, at the end of the day, this is a game, right? So baseball restarting, right? This is this is too clever mafia's two cents, we'll call it. T-O-O cents, right? In mid-June... It's mid-June, three months left, half a season. Players get half their pay, their contracts or whatever it is, right? Makes perfect sense. I don't see why you wouldn't want to give them what they earn, but, you know, if they work half a season. Now there's going to be some time of practicing and all and all that, but they're going to work and they're going to get paid. R- remove all, there's in something called interleague play, if you're not familiar with it, where uh, American teams, there's two leagues in baseball, American teams and then national teams, and they interleague, right? But at the end of the day, at the end of the World Series, it's the American League versus the National League, and whoever wins that wins the World Series. They go through their playoffs and all of that, and the American League plays their playoffs, the National League plays their playoffs, and, and so on, right? So everyone is well rested. You know, let's just play ball. Something is better than nothing at this point. Um, you know, people have, I mean, what's going on in the world today? People have lost their jobs. Um, and you, you're not just the ball players not playing and not getting paid, right? They, these folks have millions. I mean, as some of the newer folk uh, in, the, in the league probably don't make as much and they need that money. And I've heard of stories where players were, were doing uh, Uber and delivering food and all of that stuff. But they, th- there's players, not just those folks. Think of all the store owners that are around the the stadiums, right? They 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 they, they sell their merch, the the merchandise. I gotta start saying merch because uh, Tessy was on a while. Uh, if you've listened to that episode, great episode uh, about Ninety Day Fiance, definitely check it out. Um, but she said she didn't know what merch was, so merchandise. But they sell their merchandise around the stores, all the stadium workers, the folks that actually bring you the overpriced hot dogs and beer and soda and to your seat, and they, and then the, the, there's the parking attendants that are outside the stadium and all the little mom and pop places. And there's a lot of of, of people that are, are hurting because they're not, you know, they, their livelihood depended on these, um, the Major League Baseball and their, their their stadiums. And then when these stadiums were built, these towns gave them, a lot of them gave them concessions to say, hey, okay, you're going to build here because you're going to bring, you're going to build here because you're going to bring a lot of revenue in, you know, and they depend on them. They really depend on them. And uh, listen, at the end of the day, if you play, you play, you fill half the stadium with, you know, groups of families and, and you know, whoever, keep the groups together. Uh, separate as many as much as you can, a few seats in between a group, right? You lose three hundred thousand dollars a game, and FYI, it's not really losing it. Like I lost my keys last week. It's three hundred dollars. Three hundred thousand dollars. They're saying a game that they were they're anticipating from selling those overpriced hot dogs and beer and soda and the cracker jack, and uh, selling all the merchandise, right? So. <laughs> Right, AJ? AJ's trying to make sure... He's here to make sure every time I I don't say merch anymore. But anyway, sorry, AJ. I'm, I'm not really uh, p- 
paying attention to you. How, how are you doing today, Peter? Good? All right. Well, I don't know. I don't know. As a, as a fan, um, let me say um, I depend on Major League Baseball for enjoyment, as most of the fans of the sport do. And it's a build as America's pastime. It's a game that adults get paid to play, which all of us, you know, we go to work, we get paid. Some of us enjoy what we do. Probably the majority of us do not. Um, not that, I mean, I enjoy doing this podcast for you, but there's been plenty of times over my career where I have had jobs where I'm like, you know, do I really have to get up and go to work today? Right, AJ? Well, like you? Oh, come on, AJ, your job, you sit in the booth. You don't even talk because you can't get the microphone working. You sit there and you press buttons, really. Now press a button now, go ahead. Pre- put one of your little sound effects in. Okay, there you go. That, that was that hard? Okay. Anyway, at the end of the day, let's just play ball. There's no reason for any of this, and, and it, it's not helping the fans of the game who has been recovering for a long time. And uh, let, Let's get their act together. Let, let's get some back to some sense of normalcy around here, huh? I am Too Clever Mafia. Um, check us out over on uh, www.tooclevermafia.com mafia.com and all of our social medias it's t-o-o clever mafia c-l-e-v-e-r and we uh enjoy our some of the videos we post uh, uh we enjoy your comments over on youtube definitely check us out on youtube watch some of our videos i'm uh, actually doing some gaming over there now and uh, uh, PUBG, right but um that's all i gotta say about that today folks we'll be right back Okay, hello everyone. Thank you, AJ, for another lovely intro, return, or whatever you want to call the music that you're playing there. But So, another great show today. Everyone, uh, hope everyone enjoy themselves. Um, we have, we're just cranking out these shows, aren't we, AJ? One after another after another. We have so much lined up for you. We have so much new... Um, we're going to be doing so many new things. I really don't want to spoil a lot of it for you, um, but we have so much stuff coming your way. Uh, we're probably almost halfway through this season, and uh, we've already working on the second and the third. We have interviews lined up. It, it's going to be wonderful, and we really do appreciate you, Mafians, and anybody who would like to support the channel, definitely head over to Patreon, and um, uh, we love to have your, your support if you want to help us continue to make some great content but uh, I want to leave you with a little story from yesterday this happened yesterday and I didn't, wasn't going to necessarily share this with everyone but I thought you know what I think I, I'm going to I'm going to tell everybody what happened and let everyone judge for themselves to see if this was a if it was a too clever mafia problem or if this was the other person's problem and uh, who was right and who was wrong and all of that but hopefully you guys can go over to uh Go over to the YouTubes and comment and let me know what you think. But um, definitely, um, I don't know. I'm kind of torn about it both ways, to be honest with you. But so I'll tell you the story. You ready, AJ? AJ doesn't know this yet either. So we're gonna. He's the first time he's gonna hear this. So yesterday, uh, I, I light bulb blew in my home, which is not not a big deal. I had to go get a new one, and it was a specialty uh, light bulb. It was one of those. Um, the fluorescent ones, the long tube ones, right? But but I, I looked up online and I didn't want to get a fluorescent light bulb because the light, they keep dying. They're like $3 to buy, but they keep going and going. And every so often I have to replace them. I said, well, let me look and see if there's an LED replacement because these LED lights, they're not bad. I've had ones in uh, I had replaced quite a while ago and they they last they still are lasting it's got to be three or four years and you never have any problems with them as long you know there's good ones and bad ones of course but the good ones they, they last a long long time a lot better than the um, old uh, standard ones and then the fluorescent ones which is what I was trying to place anyway so I head over to the local home improvement store and um, we'll just call it uh, uh, it rhymes, we'll, we'll call it Moe's, okay? It rhymes with Moe's. We'll just call it Moe's for now. Don't necessarily want to bash the whole store because it wasn't necessarily the store's problem. Although, again, it may have been. We'll see. 
So I find, I go, I go through the, this door and I, I find the light bulb that I need and I walk up to the, um, the front of the store and, uh, there's not, there's employees, it's very, it was busy, surprisingly, um, but I walk up to the front of the store and I look and there's no, um, human cash, uh, cashiers, right? Only the self-checkout lines, which... They have three on one side of the line and three on the other, and then there's a space in the middle, and people are there checking out and and whatnot. So I go to the self checkout because I really had no other option, um, and the I stood on the right side. There was somebody on each of the terminals on the right, and then there's somebody on each of the terminals on the left, and I stood on the right side. I came up from from the right side in the store, because that's where the lighting was, and then I went right from there to the register, right? So then uh, I'm standing on line, waiting, and I'm still looking. I'm I'm hoping a a human cashier opens up, because I do not like the automated checkouts. There's always a problem, always. I have problems everywhere, but always a problem with Uh, self-checkouts. Somebody on the left side was waiting, a gentleman, and he says, uh, he says to me, uh, he's roughly about my age, but he, he didn't really say, he kind of shouted, and he said, uh, hey, the, the line is over here, right? Now I'm thinking to myself, there's there's three terminals, right? Cashiers or cash registers, the automated stuff, and I'm on the right, and he's on the left, and I'm, oh, it's all, for me, the self-checkout has always been, you know, there's two sides, and you pick a line that way, because normally if I was going to a register, I wouldn't be able to just stand there and yell and say, hey, I'm next, and there's 12 registers open, right? And you run up, and it doesn't work that way. We, we live in a society. We're supposed to be civilized, right? So I run up, and I'm waiting there, and he says, uh, the line's over here. And I, I was confused at first, right? So I, I look around, and on a side note, uh, I did have my mask on, Right, but so I, I, I turned to him and with my light bulb in hand, and I said to him, um, "Well, my line is over here. I, I'm in my own line." You know, I'm thinking to myself. I said, "You know, well, he's over there. I'm over here. We're in separate lines." And he was outraged. He was unbelievably outraged. He points down to the ground by his feet, right, and there's a sign that says, uh, "Wait here." Right, and I'm thinking, okay, well, and he's all the way over there, probably I don't know, uh, 12, 15 feet away from where I'm standing. I'm, out, I'm wearing my mask, so there's really no way for me to give him any type of facial expression other than maybe give him a squinty eye. Right? I mean, what are you gonna do? You're you're, you're covered up. But I uh, now I glance forward at the because there's a monitor, a person at the end of the self checkout after you would have paid and walked past, watching everything, and he looks at me, and he see, he clearly sees the conversation that we're having, says nothing. So now I'm thinking, do I go wait behind this person because he thinks there's one line for six registers, right? Or do I stay where I am? So I looked to him, and I said, uh, I said, well, after I said that, you know, well, my, my line is here, you need to come over here. You need to get behind here. Uh, you know, he never said he's next or anything. He said you need to be over here. In that process, the person in the first uh, automated terminal ahead of me ended up uh, leaving. He paid. And remember, I only had one light bulb. By the way, the, the gentleman that was upset had, I don't know, 20 items. And I'm, I'm normally, you know, if someone came behind me in a food store or anywhere... I would and had one item and I had 20 a common courtesy would say hey here go ahead you go first I'm going to be a while you go first which is what I would expect to be treated the same way I mean I don't necessarily ask for it but somebody offers I have no problem with going ahead of them if they offer right so which most of us are probably happy and it's just courtesy and it's human decency right so now there's a lady again a lady about my age behind this man I don't know where he she came from she I think she might have been his significant other right 
So when I start, I walk up to the, to the register that I'm, I was only about a foot away from, or maybe two or three feet away from it to begin with um, at that point, and then I waited, um, you know, for the person to leave. And I walk up and I put my my light bulb on the uh, scanning thing because I and I try to use the handle to scan it, the little uh, gun, laser gun, right? And the lady called me an a-hole. The full word, though, AJ. The full word. And I'm like, whoa, this is out of control. Why am I an a-hole? Because I waited in line. In my line, I was next, and I went. You know, do I think everybody at the food store is is, is an a-hole? Because they ended up getting... Um, uh, you're picking a good line that didn't have somebody that had a, a check or paid by, you know, or a price check that they delayed the whole... Do I think that? No, I think that's the line I always end up in and having to wait for everybody else, but I did not think the person was a derogatory term. So, I, the first thing that came to mind was, well, I could call her name back, but that's not too Clever Mafia. You know, I don't, Clever Mafia does not do that. So, I looked at her and I said, you know, well, she couldn't see me. I guess she could see me looking at her, but I was in the middle of scanning my thing. I said, yeah, it's very classy. I was like, you know, I was like, that is very, very classy. So she proceeded to call me an a-hole again. Now, I just turned and scanned and paid for my, my item and the person that worked there saw the whole thing. Didn't, didn't skip a beat. Didn't say... Yeah, the line is over there. Just was watching. Didn't smile, didn't grimace, just kind of, maybe they were just zoned out, who knows. But ended up, I rang it up, paid for it, right? And the lady, again, called me the this derogatory term. So I, I don't know, I was going to, I, I was thinking of really laying into them at that point and, my, and then giving them my philosophy, you know, but I, I didn't have time. I just wanted the light bulb. This was not a big ordeal. And then the man says to me, you're just a glass hole. Called me a glass hole. Maybe he didn't want to say the bad word in front of... I mean, there had to be a dozen people there on both sides, and other people had come up, and some were in line where I was standing. Called me a glass hole. Now, I know if Mrs. Mafia found out about this, she probably would have blamed it on me and would have been very embarrassed at the time. But I feel it was appropriate for me to stand in line behind the row of registers that I was... Attempting, like, you don't own every register in the store. You can't be, say, okay, I'm next, no matter where the 30 of the registers, you don't, I don't believe in that. And maybe this is something that's recently started because of the, um, the situation where we have to keep socially distanced or, or the, maybe, maybe when the opening of these, um, automated registers, right? That could be a definite, uh, reason because so it's a kind of a newer thing right like before you just had people i know during the holidays and you've heard me talk about black friday and different days like that during those holidays they like a uh, um, couple of the big clothing and department stores and all of that they have um uh, corrals that you go through right and then you wait there and then the next cashier takes you but if you go to walmart or you go to any any place food stores or like you don't just sit there and you, you create one 20-mile line. I, I don't agree with it. But anyway, uh, that's our show for today. Um, hope you enjoyed my little story. Please comment. Let me know. Let me know if I was wrong. Is it one line for as many registers? I mean, really, where's the designation? There were no corrals, no signs. There was a little circle on the ground that said, wait here, which I didn't see. I couldn't have seen it if it was right in front of me. If I was standing on it, I wouldn't have seen it. So I grabbed my items, I grabbed my receipt, I looked over at the gentleman, and I said, have a nice day. And only Mrs. Mafia knows what I really mean when I say that. Oh well, so I don't know, I don't know, I, whatever. We're going to move on, but uh, hope uh, everybody enjoyed the show today. Check us out over at uh, www.twoclevermafia.com. Uh, 
Obviously, you're listening to our podcast. It's If you're watching this on YouTube or listening to it on YouTube, you can check us out on any of the major podcast networks, Apple Podcast, Google Podcast, Anchor, Spotify, the, the, whole, the whole bunch. Um, we are definitely everywhere. But uh, drop us a line, subscribe, like to our social medias on Facebook and Instagram and face and uh, what's the other one, AJ? Twitter. We're on Twitter. And Discord. The AJ has been monitoring our Discord and it's getting a lot of a lot of attention. Thank you, AJ, for doing that. And, uh, and we shared a lot of uh, stories with you this week. So I hope you enjoyed all of that. And we will see you again next week, my mafians. This is Too Clever Mafia, and that's all I have to say about that. Bye-bye.